I'm here with Mr. Anthony Cordesman. Mr. Cordesman, why would you attend a conference like this one? I think from both Israel's viewpoint and that of America, what's happening right now in the Middle East, in the region, and in some ways the Islamic world, has become so important in terms of world stability, the global economy, for that matter, America's strategic interests at a conference like this is focusing on issues that affect our strategic relationship and our future in ways we really have to discuss. The uprisings in the Arab world were once referred to as the Arab Spring. Do you believe that it's turned to an Arab winter? Let me note, only in the West did anyone ever use that phrase. The Arabs thought it was remarkably stupid and ignored the amount of time it was really going to take to make these changes. And indeed, if you go back to the Arab Development Report, which is part of the UN, they were talking about five to ten years of critical demographic, economic, political changes. And that's playing out, I'm afraid, all too clearly. Whatever happens in Egypt, in Syria, whatever happens in North Africa, for that matter, the Gulf, is not going to be quick. It's not going to be tomorrow in the narrow sense. It's tomorrow for the next decade. What do you believe we will see come to pass in Egypt in terms of what the government will look like there? I think what you are going to see is a government which almost regardless of who wins or even appears to win the current power struggle is going to be very unlikely to last for even two years. What you are going to see I think is a series of political battles, some of them over the future of Islam in Egypt, some of them over the role of the military, some of them just basic political struggles to form a new structure. But they're going into these elections with people who have no political experience in really cooperating with each other, no practical experience in governance, and a structure of government that's basically failed to adapt to the needs of the people. So to worry about what happens over the next year is critical. But regardless of what happens over the next year, we will be going through this at least several more times before there's any hope of stability. Is the 1979 peace accord between Egypt and Israel in jeopardy in your opinion? When you talk about the basic structure of the peace accord, probably not in the near term. When you talk about the tensions between Egypt and Israel over the Gaza, over Egypt's perceptions of what this peace means, Israel's concerns with security, I think it's very clear that Israel faces serious challenges in the Gaza, in the Sinai, serious problems in building up any kind of relation with Egypt. Because it's one thing to have a cold peace, it's another thing to have a frozen one. Let's move on now to Syria. Why do you believe we haven't seen any international intervention like we saw in Libya? Well first, Libya was remarkably easy. All you needed was air power. You were dealing with an organized military movement which was basically able to counter with almost limited support what Gaddafi had turned into much more of a military parking lot than an effective force. You have no organized military opposition as yet in Syria. What you have are little islands of resistance you are talking about one of the more sophisticated military forces in the world. You're talking about a security force which is very well armed in addition to the military. And it is a matter of timing. If there's an Arab Spring, there's also a NATO Spring and a European Spring and an American election. And Europe is far more reluctant to take any action today than it was two years ago. How do you gauge relations between the U.S. and Israel at this point? I think the relations are quite good. In many ways you see probably more bipartisan support for aid to Israel than you have seen in some time. You certainly have a president that sees this as a critical security interest. The politics, however, are not as good as they could be. Partisan politics in the United States lead to a partisan debate over U.S. ties to Israel. You have, I'm afraid, in Israel a constant effort. It's a little like Oliver Twist. In fact, when you think of it, Israel is America's strategic Oliver Twist. He is always asking for more. Thank you very much for your time, and we hope you enjoy the conference. I'm sure I will.